Hello, welcome to part one of my psychic reading on Princess Diana. I did a reading on her a few years ago, so here we are for an update, especially now that the Queen Elizabeth, unfortunately the second, has passed away. And part two will only be available for YouTube members, so if you would like to see part two, become a member by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button. Pick a tier. Um, once you click the join button, then you'll have access to part two of this video and part two of countless other videos I've done. Um, exclusive content for my YouTube members. Um, if you would like a personal reading, I am available for personal readings. Um, once again, I am Lamar Townsend. If you're new to my channel, please like, share, and subscribe. I am a psychic and energy, energy channeler, a tarot reader, and an astrologer. Um, you can text me at 703-791-9162. Uh, better yet, just go ahead and visit my website. That is the best way to reach me and get in contact with me for a personal reading. This is my website, LamarTownsendTarot.com. So once you've reached this page, you know you're on the right page. You can check out my Twitch where I do monthly horoscopes, become a member, subscribe, like, and share to my YouTube. Check out my Patreon where I also do exclusive content and my Spotify on Apple, Google, or Apple, Google Anchor, and more. You can also scroll down and read reviews and follow me down here on Instagram and my Facebook. If you would like a reading, go right to the store section. This is where you can go to view all the rates, services, products, classes, and different types of things I offer. Um, the main way to pay uh, via my website, you can use your card and things like that. Um, you can use PayPal if you have it, but there's other forms of payment as well. Just click the other forms of payment section, and it'll give you uh, the links to my PayPal and my, um, or it'll give you the links, I'm sorry, to my Venmo and my Cash App, because I know some of you, um, like Venmo or you like Cash App better than PayPal or you know what so have you so there's other you know options in terms of how to pay um, here's the other forms of payment available alright so if you would like a reading just go right to the store section like I said this is where you can go to view all the rates services products classes candles and things I offer I do birth chart readings both compatibility and individual I do mediumship readings if you want to connect to those who have passed on. I do past life readings. I do um, phone readings, email readings, video recorded readings where you send your questions and then I email you the video where I do your tarot reading and keep it or you can keep it and download it uh, and have it forever basically. I do dream interpretation readings, um, or yes, dream interpretation readings, uh, like I said, classes and candles, and there's a price point for everyone, so if you would be interested, do not hesitate to reach out to me for a reading on my website, lamartownsandtarot.com, alright? So thank you all for being here. Um, let's go ahead and get into the reading on Princess Diana. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to actually be channeling in this reading, but if I'm compelled to pull cards, I'll pull cards as well. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and cleanse the cards is the first thing, because I do this in every reading I do. Thank you for cleansing and clearing the energy of the stack when you pass reading. Amen, amen, amen. Please like the video. You guys know I'm one of the most accurate uh readers on YouTube period so please like the video stick around so we got the cards cleansed um, get a personal reading I look forward to your personal readings I am available today by the way if you want a personal reading phone readings do have same-day priority let's go ahead and um, do a singing bowl thank you spirit for bringing forth the energy of Diana thank you for making this a safe space for Diana to feel comfortable expressing herself thank you for removing any negative energy in this space thank you for protecting my energy my home my space protecting diana's energy thank you for letting diana's ancestors and protectors know that we do come in peace love and light in the name of the mother the daughter the father the son and the holy ghost amen 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 By the way, check out my meditation playlist where I do singing bowls like that um, on a playlist that you can listen to on loop for hours and hours and hours. I like to listen to those types of playlists to help me sleep. So, um, or just relax or do readings or, you know, I always have one playing throughout the day. So let's get into it. Let's tap into Princess Diana.
Diana, we ask that you come through. Thank you for bringing us clarity and insight. Um, thank you for telling us what you would like to tell us. So what things do you have to tell us? The first thing I'm hearing is alone and lonely, alone and lonely. Um, to me, it feels like this is how she's describing either her last days in the royal family, the royal kingdom, or maybe are you saying that's how you felt often throughout your life, lonely and alone? She says off and on. But especially in the royal kingdom, especially in the, the with the royals, she says. She says lots of time alone, lots of time spent alone, in quiet rooms, very big rooms, she says, elaborate. Um, but it's weird, she says, alone and lonely, but still being watched, or the, with the feeling of being watched. Like, alone and lonely, but being watched, which is interesting. She says, initially, I didn't think they wanted to harm me. They were very kind, initially. But then Camila, she says, Camila. Confirmation. Um, she kind of laughs. She's like, Camila, um, Camila and Charles, she kind of goes like this, work together. Um, but at the detriment of me, she says. She says, towards the end, they try to also pit the boys against me. And I think when she says the boys, I think she's speaking of Prince Harry and Prince William. She says, towards the end, they tried to pit the boys against me. Um, she says, William especially. Interesting. She says, William especially. I hear the words dedicated, heartfelt. What are these describing, Diana? What words are these describing? She says, me as a mother, him as a boy. So are you speaking of Prince William when you say that? She says, yes, okay. Two peas in the same pod, she says. But yet, she says they try to make us seem so different. Harry, she says, wasn't falling for the tricks. He was too smart, she says, even as a little boy. Harry was an outsider like me from the beginning. Oh gosh, Diana. Okay. Diana says, this is all alleged for entertainment purposes, YouTube purposes only, but she says, and can I say this? Like, I don't know if I feel comfortable saying it, but can I, can I say it or can I repeat it? She says, sure, go ahead. All right. Well, Diana says, Charles never liked Harry. I had to go get my water, y'all, because, child, y'all know I'm getting nervous now. <sighs> Gotta stay hydrated. We said it at the both times. She's like, stay hydrated. <laughs> so can you elaborate a little bit on that, Diana? You said, um... Prince Charles never liked Harry. What more can you tell us about that? She says, Harry was always interested in things that Charles wasn't. Harry was always interested in things normal boys were interested in. She says, Pokemon. I don't know if he was a big Pokemon fan, but I do know Pokemon was big back then in the day. Um, I was a fan as well, as you, as you, I don't know, as you may or may not know. Um... <laughs> She says Pokemon, he liked Pokemon, he liked to play badminton or like um, 
some sort of sport. I don't know if this is like lacrosse, but he it looks like he has like a stick in his hand or like a bat. So I don't know if it's like, I don't, I don't even know if badminton is a bat, but it's like, I keep hearing her say something like badminton or um, something with holding a stick in your hand. Um, she says, which is funny because Charles is into golf, she says. Didn't know that. She says, look online. Let's see, are there pictures of Charles, Prince King Charles playing golf? Oh, here's the picture actually. It looks like King Charles and um, Prince William. Oh dang, I lost the picture. I don't know if they're playing golf, but it looks like they're playing something together. Can you see the stick in Charles's hand right there? And they're young too. Interesting. Here he is playing golf. She's not lying. Here he is literally playing golf. Is that Trump, Diana? That's not Trump. She laughs. It's not Trump. Oh, he's fishing here. He looks young there. Diana kind of puts her face away like, oh, oh God, I remember those days. Um... So, okay, I didn't know Charles was also in, uh, you know, a mini sports person as well. Interesting. Um, that's kind of confirmation that she she is, in fact, here. I didn't have, I didn't have a doubt you're here, but Cleopatra does that, too, as well, where she does things or says things, and it's like, I'll prove it to you that I'm me. You know, look, look this up. Or, you know, like... So I like that you did that, Diana. Thank you for kind of proving to us basically that it is you. I appreciate that. And now I have chills. Uh, okay, I need to breathe. Just breathe. Just breathe. <sighs> All right, breathe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Diana. I just get nervous. I do want to say that you look beautiful in purple. Can I describe what you're wearing right now? It looks like you're wearing, like, I hear chiffon. So I don't know if she's wearing chiffon, but you're wearing, it looks like to me, all, all white. Um, your pants are very flowy. You have on these beautiful, um, and she kind of pulls her, her pant leg up so I can see her shoes. It almost looks like they're black with like a, I don't know if it's a steel toe or like a gold kind of toe on them. Um, I don't know if this is a jacket that you have on, but it's like, it's almost see-through. Like, you know, you have on a blouse, a jacket, it's almost like you're very layered, but it's like a model type of layered. Your hair is still in the short coif. Um... You do seem a bit frazzled, though. Frazzled. Just a little bit. Just, you know, I, I'm just, I just have to describe it for the people, so. She says, I've been stressed. So much is changing on this side and on that side as well, your side. And it's becoming more stressful for me to protect my children and now she says I have grandchildren to protect here on the other side as well so many people you know my, my sons are being pulled in different directions the grandchildren are being influenced by you know so many different people um, she's like the queen I don't want to talk about her right now we can talk about her in part two I was, fi I, was I figured we'd talk about her in part two so no n no no issue there if you want to see part two, where it seems like we'll talk about the queen a bit more in depth, check out part two, all right? But I just wanted to let you speak in part one, you know, because that's usually what I do, just out of respect for the spirits. I want to hear what they have to say, all right? She says one thing she likes to do in spirit now is she likes to actually spend time in the garden. She says Charles's garden, picking flowers. Um... She says roses, lilies, she says some sort of purple flower. I don't know if this is like um, lavender or something like that. She likes to spend a lot of time out there. She likes to spend time watching people walk by the castle, the royal castle, the kingdom. Sometimes she'll be in a window looking down in spirit. 
Um, I don't know if sometimes people feel like they look up through the windows and they feel like they see her or they see a, a being, you know, in, in the window, but it's like, is it a being? Is it not a being? She's like, it could, it could, could have been me. You know, she says, um, she says, sometimes I don't realize my own power on this side. Um, she says on this side in the spiritual realm, she says in the spiritual realm, she says, um, We're still evolving. We're still growing. But she says part of our journey on this side is to assist those still living, connected to us. Or, she says, whose karma we're connected to that has not quite been rectified before we passed. So she says, you can imagine me, you know, I passed away when my children were very young. Almost looks like there's a face behind you there, Diana, in this picture actually here. To the right of you or the left of you it's like it almost like there's a face in the um the bushes back there i'm sorry but i just noticed that but i didn't mean to interrupt you sorry she says no it's fine um she says i, I didn't notice that either that's very ominous she says um she kind of goes like this she's very on, ominous um she says anyway on this side um On this side, we, um, she means the spiritual side. On the spiritual side, you know, imagine, you know, I, I passed away when my children were young, you know, and never quite got to do everything I was meant to do in their lives to help them become the men that they were to become. So I have to do what I can do on this side. And she says, mind you, you know, um, when it comes to children, you know, beings that are birthed out of you, you know, really you're indebted to them for life until they pass away. All right. So she's kind of like, I'm going to stick by, she's basically saying what you're saying is I'm going to stick by my son's side. There's my son's sides until they eventually pass away. She's like, I'm never leaving basically. All right. But then once that inevitably happens, you know, um, the grandchildren will have the true, she says she's, the word girth, she says, um, and the true strength of their ancestors. Because once they transition, meaning my son, she says, I would have become even more stronger you know, that I can assist them in their transition from the physical to the spiritual. So she's kind of saying, like, the work is never done. The work was never done. Um, she kind of goes like this, Charles and Camila. Charles and Camila. She says, it's interesting. It's interesting the way things panned out. Excuse me. She says what people don't understand or what Charles doesn't understand mainly is that while Camila has the grace about her, she says, and has her wits about her, she says, she doesn't necessarily make a good queen consort, especially with the way she entered the picture. And she says, in context to me. And she goes just like this, in context to me. That face in the background in the bushes is kind of like creeping me out now. Like, it's like, ooh. She says, I know. I didn't, you know, I didn't realize it at first. But now I see it's like almost like an omen of some sort, she says. Um... She says, they didn't want me to be queen. They didn't want me to be queen, consort. They thought that I had too much power. 
She says, and for me to come behind Queen Elizabeth, who had so much power, she says. She says, and this is what she says. This is all alleged for YouTube purposes. She says, really, the battle, what people don't, most people don't realize, the battle is really not necessarily just between me and Charles, or mainly between me and Charles. It was really between me and the Queen. She says, the Queen saw me as a threat. Wow. She says, think of it this way. Imagine a celebrity, she kind of brings up Beyonce, such as, you know, we'll go with Beyonce or, you know, any other celebrity. You know, it's very famous, you know, has worked very hard all their lives, you know. I'm trying to naturally speak in your accent, I'm sorry, I don't know, it just keeps slipping out. I don't know if I'm doing a good job, though, so I'm trying to pull it back. Anyway. She's like, imagine, you know, um, you know, celebrity has been working very hard, you know, um, their whole lives. And they get to a status of power after 20, 30, however many years of, you know, um, being a powerhouse, being a very powerful being in the industry, right? In their field. But then someone comes along in a new age, 20 years later, 30 years later, once this person has reached their peak in some way, shape or form, and they start getting attention. The new crop of, of, of powerhouses come around to fight for their place as well. The new generation, she says. She says, really, this was a case of the new generation versus the old generation. And the queen was very pristine and pre precise about how she wanted the new generation after her to be. She wanted the new and wants the new generation to fall in line behind her. Diana goes like this, however, that's not going to happen. She goes, when the cat's away, the mice will play. She says, the queen can do everything in her power on this side. And don't get it wrong, she says. She's like, don't get it twisted, all right? Don't get it wrong, she says. She is still powerful on this side. All right? She's just as powerful on this side as she was on the other side the physical realm. She's like, all those rituals, all those, you know, um, crownings and stuff like that, crowning rituals. She's like, those were done for just as much as a physical purpose as they were a spiritual purpose as well. All right. To ensure her legacy. She's like, she couldn't get Charles to necessarily fall in line. Or she got Charles to fall in line the best she could. Which involved getting rid of me, she says. Her, meeting Diana. But, um, William fell in line quite easily, she says. Alright? It was Harry, however... Who took after his father and his mother in being a bit rebellious. However, she says, the queen has a soft spot for Harry. She says, Harry's a class clown. Harry's the type of person that, in the very vapid world, she says, of the royals. And the very um, controlled world of the royals and... You know, almost hysterical, you know, not in the sense of, like, funny, but, like, you know, just kind of, like, this is crazy. Like, you know, why are we so stuck up and foo-foo and, you know, Diana's looking at all this and, like, why can't we have fun here? Like, Harry was that guy. Like, let's have fun. Let's joke. Let's not be so serious all the time. Let's pull pranks on each other. Harry pulled pranks on his grandma, especially when he was young, and she loved it. Like, the grandma loved it. it made her laugh. You know, so it's, like, there was a fun side to the queen mother or um queen elizabeth ii that she didn't show everyone all right but it's sad because while harry was almost like the court jester in a way um 
Harry knew he would never become king. So in a way, it was like, well, I have the freedom to be funny. I have the freedom to, you know, um, act kooky and crazy and make people laugh and pull pranks and ha ha ha. And, you know, not only pull pranks on grandma, but, you know, the, the, um, the troops, the army people as well. And, you know, making them laugh or making them squirm. It's like, you know... But Prince William couldn't. It's like, it was very hypocritical. It's like, it's like that kind of energy. Um, so she's kind of like Harry took after his mother in the sense of fun, funniness, hilarity, not taking things so seriously. William has that in him too, but once again, he fell in line more easily. He was a bit more controllable. He was a bit more easier to tame. All right. She says, as a mother, however, my job was to um, instill in them a sense of freedom, freedom in thinking, critical thinking, that kind of thing. She also raised them to be more diplomatic, more understanding of the plights of the people. All right. Because once again, it's like, you know, these people in the Royal Kingdom, they just stay in their the castle all day, their rooms all day. Or they travel to Monaco and Paris and this and that, you know, you know, twice a week or, you know, however many times a month. You know, it's like that's their bubble. But there's a whole world out there, it's like, you know, Diana, to, to be discovered, to be um, admired, appreciated. Diana also had stalkers. Did you have stalkers? I don't know why I'm seeing stalkers. She's like, yes, unfortunately I did. That's also one, uh, one issue I, um, the royals had with me is that I made myself too accessible, she says. She's almost like saying she would go running at night. She liked to walk around the neighborhood or the neighborhoods kind of thing. She liked to feel normal. I think we're about to wrap up here soon to get ready for part two. Um... Are there any lasting words you want to say, Diana, Princess Diana, for part one? Oh, by the way, I'm so glad you came through. Thank you for coming through. She says the true purpose of life is to love and be loved. It's very simple. Find something you love, find the people you love, and find the people who love you back. She says, unfortunately, that's not always our in-laws, as you can see. And she kind of makes a joke of that. That, that was a good one. I like that. She's, she's funny. Like, I like that you have a sense of humor about everything. She's like, of course, sometimes it can be our family. Sometimes it can be friends we outgrow. All right. Find the love. Find the joy, she says. That will sustain you. Everything else will fall into place, she says. That was very inspiring, Diana. I feel like I needed to hear that. Like, I don't know why that just got me a little bit emotional, you know? All right. Um, this has been a lovely chat. Thank you so much, Diana. I really, really enjoyed our chat. I'm excited for part two, where it sounds like we're going to get a little bit into more juicy topics that we can't say for the regular public, all right? So if you want to see part two, where we'll get more into um, maybe her passing, actually, it seems like she may want to talk about that. Uh, more about Queen Elizabeth. And maybe she says more secrets, too. She kind of goes like, maybe more secrets, too. So, all right, you guys. Thank you so much for listening and watching. I hope I was able to give you some clarity and insight. As always, we appreciate Diana for coming through. I will see you in your own personal reading. All right. Remember, I am available for personal readings today. Daniel's like, get a reading from him. He's good. All right. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. Um... So, I feel like this is deja vu. I feel like we've had this moment before in maybe the last reading. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for listening and watching. I'll see you in the next video. I'll see you in your own personal reading. Either way, I will see you soon. Or I'll see you in part two.
Love and light.